hello, hello. Uh, sorry for the few seconds of silence there. Just the music that's playing right now is the uh, intro music for uh, the Chains of Promathia expansion, which we won't get into immediately in this recording, but I just figured that, uh, hey, I'd show you some of the other themes. Um, maybe try to start videos logging in. Eh, probably not always. I actually never heard this theme uh, until I switched to it. I'm only familiar with the original, the Treasures of Adagon, the Wings of the Goddess, and the Seekers of Adelaide intros. I jumped straight from the original, the, the vanilla Final Fantasy XI with Rise of the Zillert to uh, Treasures of Adagon. Uh, as a result, Tristan Javad are gone is uh, super nostalgic for me. But what I'm going to do in this recording, and I'm already wasting time, but uh, I've gotten every job, as you can see, to level 50, except for Scholar and Blue Mage. So, first things first, I'm going to show you uh, something you can do with Scholar. Uh, just as soon as you get to level 5. I really It's something you could look up real easy. Uh, it's a sort of a footnote about their 2-hour ability, or now their 1-hour abilities. Every, everything is so different now, I just like... I'm still experiencing, uh, like, man out of time syndrome. But, uh... This 2-hour here, Tabula Rasa, it's not immediately... Um, worthwhile. Like, as you see, it says optimizes both white and black magic capabilities while allowing charge free stratagem use. And what that means is later, Scholar gets these things called stratagems. Um, but innately, Scholar's magical skills, they're all D. And when you use light arts or dark arts, the respective associated magic skills will jump up to being a B. Plus. And what Tabula Rasa does is it makes all of your magical skills... It's basically getting to do light arts and dark arts at the same time, while uh, also having an unlimited special ability use, basically. That's what the stratagems are. And uh, they sort of reflected stratagems as aether flow charges in Final Fantasy XIV. Anyway, we want to go to the Norvalon front. We want to go to the LDM Necropolis. Uh, in the Shadow Rain era. Uh, these books are really handy for getting around. I thought about just starting the recording here, but I also kind of wanted to show off that I'd done a bunch of leveling up. Because, uh, I mean, I, I worked hard for a couple weeks. I also got a whole shit ton of, of drops and things. Uh... It's not exactly the best way to showcase it, but, um, you know, like, I've gotten, uh, let's see, this shield, I've gotten, the, I got the Ochimusha Kote, uh, and really all I thought about it was, it's about time, uh, the Jujutsu Sidabaki, uh, of course I got my brown belt, you know that already, um, and then I also got... These archer's knives from Orcish Notorious Monster in Devoy. I got this heavy, heavy halberd doing white mage scroll quest, which I actually didn't record. Um, and then I got, uh, well, all my level cap break items, but you'll hear about that soon. And I, I got a savory shank for bringing out a king behemoth, um, which depending on if my friend ever helps me with it, you may or may not be in my inventory <laughs> much longer. But anyway, as a level 5 scholar, you come back, you talk to Erlene. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's the 2-hour. Uh-huh. 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 
No doubt you've heard of Tales of Warriors, who, in the times of greatest crisis, were able to summon heretofore untapped reserves of strength. Of course, the benefits are of the mental and psychological variety rather than the physical, but nevertheless... Now, where, where was I? Ah, yes. The rub is that we scholars can only sustain the state of heightened faculties for a short duration. As the proverb goes, make use of time, let not advantage slip. It is akin to how sprinting at full speed will quickly leave our bodies wanting for breath. Of course, even this is not truly full speed, as those subconscious reserves of strength reign, remain largely dormant. And what if we were to cast off the fetters of our mortal bodies entirely, gaining mental and physical powers beyond our wildest comprehension? Yes, soon the day will come. That... Ah, forgive me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Enough about mental states. Get my stuff. Okay, so automatically this gives us the spells in Brava and Kostra. They are only available while under the effects of Tabula Rasa. And basically, Kostra is an extraordinarily powerful um, damage over time spell. It also does a pretty strong initial hit. The damage over time is 20% of the initial hit. Or maybe it's 10% of the initial hit. And then in Brava... Um, is basically refresh, regen, and haste that stacks with all other forms of haste and regen. And it used to be pretty damn ridiculous, and I know they nerfed it mildly. I don't know if, how much it's changed since then, I just know that they nerfed it. And honestly, it wasn't really that much of a nerf, as far as I can remember. But it was a nerf enough that people complained. Anywho... Now we'll go back to the present day and uh, hop off Scholar for now. I want to show you Blue Mage next. And the reason Blue Mage is still level 1 uh, is because of how Blue Mage works. Uh, you may be familiar with Blue Mage from Final Fantasy XIV, or you may be familiar with Blue Mage from uh, Final Fantasy titles such as its intro into the series in Final Fantasy V, or Strago in Final Fantasy VI, or Keystis in Final Fantasy VIII, or the enemy skill materia in Final Fantasy VII, uh, Kina in Final Fantasy IX, Kimari in Final Fantasy X. Uh, I don't know if Blue Mage was in twelve. I really need to get around to playing twelve. I've heard so much, so many good things about it. I still don't think there was a Blue Mage equivalent in 13. Hmm. Well, whatever. Basically, Blue Mages, they learn their magic from monster abilities. And that is true in Final Fantasy XI as well. And... Uh, particularly... Uh... Something that you want to do with it is you want to fight in ideally you want to fight enemies that are able to actually kill you. Um, the higher level your enemy is, the higher chance you have to learn the spell. And there's also a level difference mechanic where um, depending on um, what level your enemy is relative to you uh, will determine um, your your rate of learning. And the learn rate is never zero unless you're dead. But uh, at least I think it, unless you're dead, I think you can re-raise afterwards and maybe learn it. Uh, it's been so long. I've actually learned all of the Blue Mage spells in the game before, uh, although they since added new ones. Uh, also, Blue Mages, they use swords and clubs. Um, and oddly enough, they don't have any dagger skill, despite having pretty big uh, dagger options in earlier Final Fantasies. But then again, you know, one of the, one of the series is Blue Mages used, you know, a bull whip and Another one used a giant fork, so. But, uh. When you're first starting out, it can be kind of hard to learn the spells, because you don't have any blue magic skill yet. And that's another thing that determines, uh, 
how uh, how well you learn spells. You the higher your blue magic skill, uh, the the more or the easier it is to learn spells. And one of the very first spells we can learn is actually a spell called Pollen off of these huge hornets. I, at least I believe the huge hornets do it. Uh, every blue magic spell has a level associated with its use, just like normal spells. But unlike normal spells, uh, once you learn a blue magic spell, you actually have to set it to be active. You have sort of like a capacity for your blue magic. And so you can only use so many of them at a time. Um, and basically, it can be kind of a crapshoot learning sometimes. But if you stick to the fundamentals, um, it won't be that bad. Now, I specifically chose a sub job that didn't have any hand to hand skill. Because these huge hornets are actually so fragile, especially in the the environment that the game is in right now, that if I were to sub, like, say, warrior uh, or even thief, uh, the hand-to-hand -hand skill would kill them really quickly. And if I use my sword, I'd also kill them really quickly. So we're just going to punch them with, with our bare fist. Uh, you'll notice we're not punching twice. That's because we have no hand-to-hand -hand skill. And hope that they use pollen. Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. He did it. Okay, so now we're safe. We're safe to kill him now. We can we can go ahead and whip on our sword and kill it. And Calm Wind learns pollen! So we've learned our first blue magic spell. And let's see. We gotta go to blue magic, then we gotta go to set spells. Currently, it looks like we can set a maximum of six spells, but if you see total points, uh, each spell has a point cost, right? So, Holland takes one blue magic point. We could technically set five more spells that have the exact same point cost as Pollen. Um, also, there's a one minute recharge on spells. Uh, Whenever you set spells, whether you're just changing one spell or all of them, uh, it takes a full minute before you can cast anything, so that you can't just be switching your spells all the time and, you know, effectively make the uh, capacity for spells, you know, a, a useless mechanic. It's sort of a preventative measure to prevent Blue Mage from becoming too powerful. But, unfortunately, despite all the measures they've taken to keep this job from becoming extraordinarily powerful compared to every other job, it's pretty much almost second to none in terms of just raw power. And, um... It actually overshadows many other jobs in just terms of its usefulness and the things that you can do with it compared to other things. Uh, no job in this game is actually really like super duper terrible, uh, though you'll hear, hear otherwise. I think currently, with the state of the current game, and we're trying to get this tunnel worm to do sand spin by the way, um, the current state of the game, as far as I understand it from what I've read uh, on the auction house forum, is that Black Mage is terrible, uh, Ninja is like in the bottom five or bottom six. Uh, I think. Let's see. Full force blow. Oh man. I'm not gonna wait for you to get TP. I'll just, I'll just kill another. Punch another worm. Or go punch a. Uh, go cut on a. Uh, Thing, but uh, yeah, and that's the blue mage casting animation. And basically, uh, when the shop came out, learning spells was somewhat I want to say it was somewhat of a mystery. Um, I'm pretty sure people just data mined Square's server though, and uh, 
I could avoid Beastman aggro, that'd be nice. So, data mining removed a lot of its mystery, but it was mysterious to me when it first came out. I didn't know. I, I heard from word of mouth, you know, all these things that, all these spells you could learn, potentially. Uh, and I r distinctly remember a lot of people having a huge problem actually learning, like, Pollen. Because they just fought, they just fought the bees and tried to, like, naturally let them, uh, you know, let them do, a, you know, whatever they're going to do instead of trying to, you know, force it. And some people, it took them, like, 30 bees to learn Pollen or something. It would turn them off from the job forever. But, uh, I never had that much problems with it. But that also makes Blue Mage sort of a, uh... World Traveler. Like, you have to go pretty much everywhere to learn spells. And so we'll need access to expansion areas, we'll need access to areas locked behind story. Uh, some of the later spells, from what I understand, they added in spells they said they would never add in. Uh... And from what I understand, we actually have to do, like, I think it's not Sinister Rain. Is it Vagary? There's, there's, there's some, like, high battlefield thing I've never done before in my life that came out within the last few years. Uh, I say a few years, but it's probably been, like, six or seven. <laughs> uh, maybe five. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. Ever since they showed us the treasure hunter charts, I'm, I'm wondering if Thief's place in the hierarchy of useful jobs has gone down a lot. Because when they showed us the actual explicit treasure hunter information, uh, that made a lot of people upset. They showed that like treasure hunter beyond treasure hunter 2 doesn't influence drop rates nearly as much as people had suspected over the years. So that was uh, kind of a that bites sort of scenario. Dude, is this sapling gonna do anything? Has it, has it done anything? Like, I've been talking, I've been yakking. We can learn, uh, it's called, like, Sprout Spack, I think, from this. Lumber Powder. Ah, oh, come on, dude. You can learn Sprout Spack from the saplings. Yeah, basically, I kept Blue Mage low on level because I intend to level it basically without trusts and learn my spells as I go along. Because uh, learning the spells can be kind of difficult. Like, we need this thing to do damage to us. So, like, I'm going to strip kind of naked here so that it can actually damage us. You don't gain TP if you don't do damage. And we're also probably going to take our sword off here. How much of a punch do? Okay. Also, if I remember right, uh, without subtle blow, any hit on an enemy will give them the same amount of TP that you got from the hit. Either that or it's just 10 TP flat before subtle blow. I think it's the 10 TP flat thing. Oh, that's double bad. I don't have any echo drops because I'm a noob. Yeah, I just wanted to show, trying to get a couple spells to sort of show you what it's like. Because um, it's definitely something I'm going to have to mostly focus on off, off camera. Like, I could probably record trying to get every single spell. But it would just basically be me, a bunch of me talking. And, uh, you can see we, we've already wild away, like, 20 minutes on, you know, stuff that you don't really, you know, care about. <laughs> well, I don't know that you don't care, but I'm just saying, like, you know, what, what has really happened? You know, we haven't really 
fought anything. Oh, right, I'm silenced. Uh, and sometimes uh, later or higher level monsters are like they do their moves a little more often. Like, see, this is the spell we're after, so I'm gonna kill him now. We might not get it, but, uh... Man, we did not learn Sand Spin. Let's see, so... It's definitely something I want to take care of, you know, on my own. Uh, that, along with the skilling up. Skilling up blue magic is pretty easy. It starts out a lot harder than it actually is. Um, later on when we get our offensive spells, you just basically get to walk into combat and start spamming your spells to kill things. And that always makes uh, skilling up feel easier. But for now, I do actually want to get some other stuff into this video, so... Uh, I'll definitely be, you know, learning spells, uh, off-camera. Um, you can, basically, you can Google Final Fantasy XI Blue Mage, and you can pull up a list of every blue magic spell and where to get them. Um, and you'll see, you'll see a lot of them just, like, playing through the game, too, naturally, because you'll have to fight almost every type of monster at some point, so... You know, it's not exactly like you'll be missing out if I don't show it. You just won't see me actually, you know, you'll getting the thing in the log, you know, Calm Wind Learns. Uh, they made learning a lot more exciting in 14, where you get like this gigantic, you know, the, like the cane drop, the blue cane drops down, spins around, and makes this like cool, like electronic, like rotating, like spinning noise, and then the blue mage like mask pops up with, you know, white silhouettes in the eye holes, and it says action learned or whatever. It's pretty cool, but uh, at 11, you just see the little yellow words in the text, and it says your name and learned. And, uh, I mean, that's still pretty exciting, especially given how difficult some of these spells can be uh, if you're actually fighting stuff that can kill you. Uh, for these early spells, we kind of don't have a choice, but later spells, we get we start getting more choice the, the further we get. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Monk. I guess for a sport job I'll use Dancer. It doesn't really matter that much. But, uh. Oh, Monk can't use the Brigandy? That's interesting. I could have sworn Monk could. But perhaps I've remembered wrong again. Okay, we're with the Patos. Yeah, it's our weapon. We want to go ahead and grab these three items. We're going to exceed our limits. We're going to go break the level cap of 50. Which is the game's first level cap, by the way. I've said that before, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, it, it means a lot more when... Um, you know, you actually have something to, to, to... Well, when you're actually going to break it. Let's see... Uh, was that what I was using for body? Probably was. I thought I'd gotten something in the interim that was better than that, but... Oh well. Let's 
Blah, blah, boom. Now we're dancer sub because I have plans on going places uh, that aren't just in town. Pepsi's come out with this, like, I don't know how new it is, but it's called Black Cherry Pepsi, and it, uh, or Black Cherry Cola, and it's not really a cola, because it's like, it's basically the color of cheer wine, except it's dark red. It sort of has, like, a cola, like, side taste or aftertaste, but it's not really, like, I don't know, uh... that great, I guess. Oh, I need to be running towards... Oh, no, I could use the book to go to, to, to where I want to go. Alright, I thought I could. Did I pass it? I passed it. Okay. Sorry, I'm a dumb. As far as blue magic goes, I'm not sure exactly um, how many spells there are to learn between level 1 and level 50. I just know I can't, I don't have access to all of them because some of them are locked in Chains of Promathia areas. Uh, which, I mean, tr when Treasures of Otter Gone came out, that wasn't really a problem for most people. Although it was a problem for some people. Actually, it's a problem for a lot more people than I probably imagined. The people I played this game with back in the day were all on top of everything. They liked to get shit done and liked to be ahead of the curve. Some of them a little too much, which is why so many of them got banned and cheated for cheating uh, back in the day. But basically, uh, the NPC that's uh, related to our level cap breaks almost all of them, is this... I think it's pronounced Mayot? But everyone's always just called a Mot, or, or Matt. And, uh... He's an old man like Deganhard down in Bastok. Yeah, as you can see, that he's not really unique, uh, if you're paying attention. But to me, he was unique as a kid, because I didn't pay attention. I just, it, like, he was the first guy who looked like this, and I was surprised uh, to learn that there were other people, even in my home nation, who looked like him. But yeah, so he's going to ask us to get some stuff now that we're level 50. Well, well, you've come quite far, but you've still a long way to go. Do you know about the people here? Well, don't take this personally, but to them you're just a tiny little bug, and I'm the one who trains them. Yeah, you can call me a teacher. I'm sure you have ambitions of your own, right? If you want to break the barriers within you, you'll have to pass my test. What do you say? Accept the challenge? At once! Very good. Gather these. A piece of ancient papyrus, a clump of x-ray mold, and a chunk of bomb coal. Well, get to it! And then, I think he might say something. Oh, he's supposed to also mention, I think, key items, because they added in, a, they apparently added in key items, because they put these three items, uh, you get the Papyrus and the Eldium Necropolis from Liches, which are magic casting skeletons, uh, you get the X-ray mold from X-rays, which are fungwars, or, uh, you know, those mushroom-type monsters in, the Crawler's Nest, and the Bomb Coal from Explosures, and the Eldium Necropolis. And they added in, like, a question mark or a key item place, so you could just pick these up if you go there, instead of fighting for them. But I fought for them off-screen on Bard when I left with Bard, because Bard is extraordinarily powerful, especially with Trusts, well, particularly with Trusts. And so I EXP'd on X-Arrays, Liches, and... Uh, I was, by the time I got the papyrus, uh, and the mold, I was level 50, so the bomb coal, I just, 
I actually fought two explosions, the bomb type monsters. The second one self-destructed and killed me uh, because I didn't uh, I didn't sleep it or interrupt its TP move quickly enough. But it dropped the bomb coal, so that was what I was there for. And so now our level limit is 55. But, you can see, I only need a little bit of EXP to actually go up to level 51. And the interesting thing about the level cap raises is, is once, once you're beyond level 50, if you level one level past your previous cap, then it will allow you to unlock the next cap quest. So we actually only have to level up to level 51. And, uh... Well, real quick-like, I'm gonna go somewhere else to... Remember we were doing those rank missions before, back before I decided I needed to unlock every single quest, or, uh, job. And... So... We still need one of the items to get through Budu. We can actually get through Castle Ostroja. Uh, I think I still need one other key item for Devoy as well, but I'll probably have to look it up. I can't exactly remember. Um, I don't think I'm going to try to do... Uh, all of this quest right now. I just want to go get this key item so I can get through Budu for the rank quest. Because when I do the rank quest, I want to be ready to go so I can just get it all done in a single recording. But we will have to run through here a bit. Uh, and part of the reason I brought Dancer Sub is because it can use a job ability to turn invisible and to silence your footsteps. That's on such a low cooldown that you don't even have to worry about anything. I'm also just going to go ahead and bust out some trust. Because we're going to be doing some fighting, just not much. If we got an NM, we got a kill. And it's always up because it's a quest-related notorious monster. Uh, but it's not going to be a challenge to us at this point. But it should give us a little bit of experience points, which will get us up to level 51. So, my purpose in coming here is, is dual. I also got the map to this place, but as you can see, it's not exactly super helpful. Uh, it, it could definitely be more helpful. You know, we want to go back to book one, because that's our, our monk set. And Entice was cheap last, I think. I should... I'll, I'll fix my macros later in life, when swapping gear and... Um, having s gear swaps and skills on the same like macro and stuff are super super duper advantageous at lower levels swapping gear isn't really like you can do it and it does help but it's like not so pivotal as it is at higher levels it was actually something that wasn't intended by the game developers at all either they gave they gave us the freedom to switch gear in combat without losing anything uh, and people basically abused it. Um, and when I say abused it, I mean, like, no, I don't want the geomagnetic count. Uh, See, the original intent of gear in this game was actually... Every piece of gear has an advantage over something, and you preemptively equip yourself to uh, deal with situations. And so, like, the intent was, you know, you have a, if you have every type of gear, you can put it on ahead of time, and you'll be doing really good for whatever situation you wind up in. But... The way the player base took it was, since we had the freedom to swap everything except our weapons, 
in combat, and the reason you can't swap your weapon uh, isn't because you can't, it's because you'll lose all of your TP. So there's, there's actually times where you do want to swap your weapon, but um, you usually don't. But you can swap literally everything else, including your ammo slots. Uh, you just can't swap these three slots without, you know, also losing your TP. But, yeah, so basically people, you know, figured out, oh, hey, I can put on the gear that lets me, you know, guarantee my hits or attack faster. And then I can, you know, make this macro and swap in all my gear that has, like, you know, strength plus five on it. And then I can use my weapon skill, and this will let me weapon skill faster while also, you know, doing really, really powerful weapon skills. And so that's the way the player base sort of evolved play, whereas the developer's intent had been, like, if you have a bunch of strength gear on, you're always hitting really hard, but you're hitting slow, you know. Um... And I mean, there's nothing wrong with the way the, the player base chose to drive the game. It's definitely what I got used to, and I liked it because it, it made sense. Uh, because by the time I started playing the game, they'd already... Um, they had already made the game, you know, like that. Let's see... I don't know if we'll be able to see the monster we need to kill from here. I don't think so. But I don't really remember exactly where he is. But see, now the map is helpful. Uh, we're on the outer edge or whatever. Or the, the raised the raised white edge. And we can walk around anywhere up on the raised part. And I can't remember what the guy's name is that we're looking for. But he drops a quad of charm, I think. That's what it's called. Last time we killed one that, that dropped the augury shell. And we gotta trade them to that uh, Taru Taru in the um, in the uh, oh come on brain in The Tenshoto hideout. And I subbed the dancer, and I don't think any of these things. Oh, wait, no, easy prey, okay. We might get aggroed. Or something. There's a ton of notorious monsters that actually spawn around here. I think one of them drops the Valkyrie's mask, which is this, like, mid-level 40s mask that has, like, attack power on it or something. Uh, people used to value it because it was, like, an alternative to the Empress hairpin, or better than the Empress hairpin for weapon skills for the most part or something. Uh, you know what, though? We could just go ahead and kill that Emerald Quad Ev. Oh, we hit him for zero because he's got um, stone skin. We don't need any sambas. Oh, we don't need that either. Where is he going? Oh. I wish he would stop moving around. Okay, cool, we're level 51. Div, div you headhunter? Uh, is this the one that drops the charm, or is this the one that drops the Valkyrie's mask? I guess I'll find out.
Yay! Okay, that is the one we needed to kill. Good stuff. And these guys didn't link, so that's even better. But yeah, the, the only way to move uh, deeper into Budu is to, to run through this narrow gap to the northern section, and then you actually just run on down back into the caves. Uh, but in order to get into those caves, you need the key items from Juno. So, we're going to go ahead and go back to Juno, and... Uh, actually, well, we'll go back to Juno eventually. Uh, first, we're going to go to uh, the Northlands, because I'm actually going to go ahead and break the next level cap. I think, anyway. Assuming I can actually kill the monsters that I want to kill to be able to do that. I guess we do have to go... We have to talk to Matt first, though, before we can do it. This one requires us to, I believe... I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure... If we go and kill the monsters, we've got to kill for it. Without talking to Matt, it won't count. Because you can surely kill them at pretty much any time, it's just... You generally need... Uh the old timer to help you out. I'll actually probably switch jobs uh, to handle them. Either to Bard or to Red Mage. Probably Red Mage. How's it feel to be at the top, Sonny? Well, you ain't even close yet. You're just getting started. Think you had a hard time with the last quest? Well, well, when I was your age, I had to gather twice as many items in half the time. So stop complaining. You think you've got what it takes to take the next step? Don't think I'm forcing you or anything. Of course. Good answer. I'm proud to have a people like you. Anyway, listen close to what I have to say. Many caverns to the north are home to fiends that you can, that can find you even when you were invisible. Bring me uh, three samples of frigicite from deep within. This time it's a test of wits. Barrier breakers need brains, after all. Well, get going. I don't know why he says it's a test of wits. Uh, the monsters that can see through invisibility are the ones you have to kill. <laughs> and I guess maybe that's the test of wits? I don't, I don't really know. Uh, but I do think I am going to switch to Red Mage to to handle them. Uh, mainly because... Um, I believe they're all level 55. I could be wrong. But normally, in normal play, you would just go ahead and get to level 55 before you tried this cap quest, unless you had a lot of help from friends. In which case, they might take you for a ride up there. Uh, mine didn't. Mine said, go get level 55. <laughs> So you're not dead weight. They were all already in the 60s or 70s by that point. They played the game uh, quite a bit more efficiently and effectively and uh, more than I could. So that was a whole thing. Let's go Red Mage and Asper. As far as sub job goes, uh, I think I will. S Do I want to stay? Yeah, I think I'll stay on Dancer Sub. I don't have everything I want to have, but beggars can't be choosers. Although I should probably... No, no, we'll be fine. Let's see. Uh, no, I've got the... Um... Let's get those. 
those and that those put this away sorry about all the uh inventory stuff going on. I could actually technically just do it all in the field. I'm really only doing it while sitting in the monk house out of habit. You want a little bit of mind because if we can get it, because your enfeebling skills are affected by your mind stat. Which might mean I, I want to pick up a couple rings real quick. I should really... There's quests you can do to where when you're in a city and you're Mog House, you can... Um, exit into any portion of the city from your mog house. It's really super convenient. I just haven't done it yet because I'm lazy. It basically involves, uh, you know, Star Moogle tells us a lot, you know, there's Mithra Cubs that are cajoling the Moogle House or Moogle House Union or whatever. Go, go talk to them or whatever. And uh, that's a whole thing. Um, they, um, My brain will work, I tell you. They, um... Oh boy. My brain is not working. Was it ever? Haha! <laughs> but, uh... They ask for a flower. Is, is what... What goes on. They ask for a flower, and... This would actually be a pretty good ring to have. But I don't want to pay 100k for it. But you, I don't want to pay 50k for that either. Although, you could really use some ring upgrades. Oof. Ah, I'm here for mind rings, aren't I? Saintly ring. Yeah, that's nice and cheap. I like that. Some enfeebling spells are infected, affected by intelligence, but the ones I really care about are affected by the mind stat. And... I'm go look at grips really quickly. I don't know if there's any that I can get that I'd care about. HP and MP is always nice. Uh, yeah, succubus grip. <laughs> but no, there's not really any I care about right now. Okay. Oh, we're coming up on the hour. I, I promise, though, I won't go too far over the hour. I'm just going to break this level cap barrier. And then... Uh, Uh, which involves going around and fighting these things, and then uh, then we'll have a good time uh, next time. But uh, yeah, okay. Anywho, let's go to Valdonia. This is Zarkabard, and this is where the level 55 level cap break is at. And, uh, it's not really that difficult. It's just basically going to the four corners of, well, three corners, really, of, of Zarkabard. And I actually did a lot of leveling here from 40 to 50. Uh, the EXP here is actually ridiculously good. And, um... With trusts, it's not, it's not really a scary zone. Although I did die several times because of notorious monsters that are pretty difficult to defeat. And 
they have circumspection? Nah, they don't have circumspection, but that's okay. Uh, who needs circumspection when you have Composure? I almost forgot that Composure was a thing. But it is a hell of a thing, because all the buffs on yourself as Red Mage, they last so much longer. It is so nice. It's very nice. I made a cardinal sin. I should have cast Refresh on myself. Before I start casting all this other nonsense. Uh, I'll refresh that last close to eight minutes. Oh man, that is beautiful. And it's it's three ticks as well. That's even more beautiful. Uh, what day is it? And, and Blizzard? Uh... Nah, I want in stone because I like rocks. I need to get myself some bar peril more bar spells. I've got the money, I'm just cheap. But I'm just buffing up right now because I can. And I could cast Sneak and Invisible on myself, but that would be depriving you of seeing Spectral Jig from Dancer. Spectral Jig, uh, it lasts a lot shorter amount of time, but it's both effects at once. So it saves a little bit of time. It's also very useful in any area where monsters might aggro to magic, such as elementals or arcana type monsters. Which there are some arcana type monsters, um, sort of like right here. They're along the spine to, um, to the teleport crystal. And there's a level 70 notorious monster over there that's like the barbaric weapon or something like that. It drops some... Um, I think it's a... No, it's not a cape. Something... Oh, I, can't remember, I can't even remember what it drops. It drops something. Let's see. Yeah, I'll probably stick to fast blade. Weapon skill power is kind of funny. Like, the point of having different weapon skills is for their different properties. And every sword weapon skill up until Shining Blade has a different property from Fast Blade. But as far as skill chain properties go, Shining Blade and Seraph Blade don't do jack. They, they deal light elemental damage, so they bypass defense a little bit, but they're not really that good. Okay, so Boreal Town. This is one of the things, and it should aggro us. It should be aggressive to us anyway. Yeah. We want to start with Dia, because this thing's got a lot of HP. It takes enhanced damage, but uh, it's also got a crap ton of HP. It'll probably resist my enfeeblement for not capping on stuff. Oh! Paralysis, apparently. But we can do something called an Immuno Break that they introduced. Uh, I'd really love to get paralyzed on it. I should put refresh on. Uh, I should have had refresh on the Kuru from day one. Uh, I probably put the second tier of poison on. Okay. Uh, I could magic burst that skill chain if I thought about it.
Okay, as you can see though, for our level and me not thinking or buffing my trucks properly, this thing is actually quite um, quite a monster. Try to get it put back up. If I can get stone skin on, I can uh, I can try to convert and then heal myself. I might kill myself with this convert. Okay, I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> maybe I ought to boogie out of here and come back. Yeah, I should probably try to come back. I should try to warp out of here. I did not do a, a good, did not think about how to fight these things. Oh, I'm gonna use my blood weapon? That's not good for me. That's the Dark Knight 2 hour. That won't make it impossible to kill or anything, it, it was just... Bad news bears for me because it's healing itself. Okay. Let's get out of here. Uh, we're not going to get out of here, are we? The paralysis is going to stop me from using my ring and it's going to get freeze to cast. Okay, maybe we can get the cure four off before. Before it kills me, freeze! Come on, cast the spell. I hate when this happens. No, nope. okay. Legit, awesome, amazing. Thanks. <sighs> okay. I totally know what I'm doing. He said, being a total dumbass. Mosey on over to the mines. How much? I wonder how much experience points I lost. I should have fought something to level up the 51 on Red Mage as well, so I could use my staff that I grabbed because that was the plan. And then I didn't do it because I was like, "Ooh, the time!" And now I've wasted your time and mine. And we're gonna go over an hour. I suppose that's a good stopping place, but I I don't want to stop because I don't want to end on a sour note. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three whatevers. Let's see. Let's grab White Mage. What's up, John? And I won't really need to care about having a shield on. Um, could care about going and getting some actual more mage-oriented gear, but that would take some thought and time. I could at least grab some mage food. How much EXP did I lose? Oh, barely any. Okay. Good, good stuff. Good deal. Also, I should have thought about monster resistances, too, because that hound-type monster, if I remember right, it's actually weak to slashing-type damage. And Halver had piercing. So I should have brought a trust with, like, a sword or something. Yeah. 
So the plan is go back, uh, level up once, and then sort of take a backline, a backline job. Uh, once I have my trusts engaged. Although that's kind of the difficulty with trusts is once you engage, if you disengage, like you have to stay engaged. So it's kind of a uh, a weird mix of bad, good stuff going on. Uh, do it be under M's, or can I only buy it from goblins? I think I can only buy it from goblins. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to sweets and let's see what we can get sweets wise that would help us a bit. That's also relatively cheap. I don't normally buy mage food because I'm dumb. Um, Coffee muffins wouldn't be that bad. How much is this coffee? single coffee muffin plus one? 90 MP and 10 mind. We wouldn't get 90 MP from it, of course, but... Because we've only got, what, 483? So. Let's see. Magic accuracy could help. But I'm not paying 400k for it. Oh my gosh. That could also help. That's really low, but yeah, okay. Mage food it is. Oh, come on. Let me get that food parfait. There's also some, like, mage notorious monsters that have s stuff like magic attack bonus, or drop items like that. Oh, come on. Let me get this... Fruit Parfait? Who's, who's trying to charge an arm and a leg for Fruit Parfait? There we go. Okay. Good stuff, good stuff. Oh, I guess I could go ahead and teach myself this spell. And this time, I'll do it right. I, I won't be quite so dumb. I'll be a little dumb, but, you know, not super dumb. Hopefully this won't take too much longer. Now that I'm gonna do it right. <laughs> mm, darkness weather. I don't like darkness weather. Really? Uh, I don't want to fight you alone. Did that it's gonna take longer than actually like. Okay. Sorry about this. This is like the one problem with this outpost is they have monsters wandering around it, and so there's a lot of times where when you look here, you can just instantly be aggroed before you even fully load in. It's really stupid. And as you can see, warping during combat is also a little bit weird. Okay. Take 506. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kind of mad at myself right now. I thought trust would be strong enough to sort of make these monsters lulzy, but I guess I'm technically still a man down. Uh, you were intended to fight these with... Um, you could actually, back in the day, you could fight these with as much as a full alliance, since they're not in a burning circle or a, uh, a battlefield instance. But um, normally, you know, like a whole party, a full party. 
And, uh... Okay, so let's try this again. We'll go to Valdunia. And hopefully there won't be a stupid evil eye instantly aggroing us right off the bat. Although he probably hasn't moved very much. <sighs> you can see how delightful this game can be sometimes like that. Let's try running this way. Maybe we won't have aggroed anything. Okay, good. Oh, you know what? I sh I'm going to summon some other trusts. So we're going to kill that eye to level up. Right quick. And that will... Um, That'll help us out. See, what I could have done last time before trying to engage the hound, I could have cast haste on all of my trusts and had them hasted preemptively for the fight. But I didn't, because I am le dumb. I thought it was going to be susceptible to both of my enfeeblements, but I couldn't get those to land either. Probably because... Oh, my enfeebling is capped for my level. Sound effects are kind of loud. Like way up there. Okay, so we're level 51 now. And that's a big deal, because that lets us equip the original staff, or any elemental staff for that matter. And as you can see, it gives plus four to every stat, and 15 to all elemental resistances, all this stuff. Iridescence is basically magical affinity for elements, and the Iridal staff is the low quality version of a staff called the Chateaulant staff, but basically, uh, it'll give us plus one elemental affinity to every spell, enhancing their accuracy and power by quite a bit. So what we want to do now is we want to trek back over there to that... Uh, ...that notorious monster. We're going to resummon all our trusts. We're going to buff them all of haste. And then we're going to engage it with our staff. But then we're going to sort of back off a little bit and uh, try to sort of take a supportive role and try to, I don't know, magic burst uh, skill chains that happen along with Shantato. Uh, we can't disengage. We have to keep our weapon drawn and we have to at least swing at it once for our trust to fight. Uh, back in the day, or with normal human players, something backline jobs can do, they don't actually ever have to pull their weapon out. They can just cast their spells, and then uh, if they need to rest for MP, they can actually rest in the middle of combat as long as they're not taking damage or being struck. Uh, and that is something that, as far as I am aware, is unavailable to us when using trusts. And so you'll see a lot of times on forums and things, people will say, oh, I soloed this with trusts. And even though they're not solo, they counted as solo because even though trusts are like having a full party, they're not actually, it's, you don't actually have a full party. It's, it's not the same. Uh, your, your tactical abilities are limited. Talk about annoying. We don't want to get too close to the cave. Because if we go too far in there, I, th I believe the monster comes out. But we do want to resummon all our trust to make them level 51. 
And I think I'll bring Tins in this time instead of Halver for the slashing. We still want... I think we still want Shantato uh, because uh, she can't get paralyzed and from the ice spikes. And let's see. Okay, so... We don't need to be worrying about things. It seemed like it was using ice moves, so we want Bar Blizzard. And if I had Bar Blizzara from my White Mage sub, I would use it. Let's see, we've got haste going on a Pururu. We probably don't need a haste Shantato. We can probably lay off of that. Um, but we will want to haste uh, Tintin and Valanirel. And we'll want to get Refresh going on uh, Valanirel and Apururu before we go in so that uh, they are also buffed. Hell, I could have dispelled its, uh, its stupid spikes last time. It's just gonna refresh my refresh. <laughs> Even though it's two minutes from wearing off and that's bad form. Okay, so it's five seconds on that. Uh. I'll get refresh going on Valan Arrow once we're in combat. You don't want to wait too long while you're buffing, especially when you're an individual buffing, um, because um, you'll run out of your buffs will wear off eventually. Because even though I've got composure on, they're not going to last for me. Okay, so we want to turn away. Get Dia going on it. Try to get slow going on it. We should have enhanced magic accuracy because of the staff and food. Okay, so we got it slowed. That's really helpful. Uh, see if we can get it silenced since it casts magic. And it's casting like ancient magic and stuff. It's like real bad. Oh, it's completely immune. So we'll have to immuno break it if we want that, it looks like. Get region going on. Line around. And then let's see. Want to help out with the cures so they're not just like hemorrhaging their MP. I think I'll have to alternate between. Curing now, and I should probably stick to cure three, honestly. Get some stone skin going. So I'm already gonna have to convert here. So I'm a dumb. Hell, I might be better off for the other ones. I might be better off skipping out on a Pururu completely. Oh man, kill Tintin. That's not good. Okay, hey, never mind. No, no, I can't skip out on a Pururu. See, this other bad thing about trusts is they can't really position themselves. If you notice, whenever it does its breath attack, it's hitting literally all of them.
bad. Well, worst comes to worst, I guess I'll just get my sword out here. They almost had it. This is frustrating. Like I don't I don't think I can win at this point. I might just have to call it quits here. Some paralysis, man. Yeah, I'm completely boned here. Like, there's no way. Oh, hey, my first level down of the Let's Play. Oh, nice! A thousand points for logging in! Woohoo! Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe I should switch to Bard. Because Bard can buff the trusts. But it seems like. I don't know. The trusts are taking so much damage. Maybe maybe if I switched to a tank job and tried to tank it, like Ninja with Yonin uh, might might do the trick. Uh, and then like sub dancer for healing or something, or sub um, well maybe just warrior for provoke. Because if I could, if I could free up stuff and, and have more precise control over the enmity, that might make more of a difference. Um, but I think I'll need food that has accuracy. But I also, obviously, I want food that also has attack. And so pizza is good for that, as far as I remember. I'm sure there's probably some better option now. But uh, marinara pizza is pretty dang good. And also, hounds are undead, so... Oh, I'm not paying 100k. Let's just get a marinara pizza plus one for 10k. And the pizza also gives undead killer, so that might help. And I could alter my trusts. I could... I could use... Let's see. I could use... Uh, oh yeah, look, we got a new title for, for breaking our, our level cap. I could use Kupipi instead of... Like, Shantato. I'm pretty sure Shantato was carrying the damage. I mean, Tenzin wasn't being a pushover or anything. I don't have to use Valineril Vila anymore, though, so I have I have options. It's just Kupipi doesn't... Uh, she doesn't do anything uh, other than heal and enfeeble, really. But hell, I'll give it a try. I'm not exactly sure what, what the best course of action is, honestly. I mean, the best course of action is probably stop the video and level one of these jobs to 55, and it'll be effortless. Uh, alternatively, I could use Bard, because Bard would be... Um, would be really strong, because it would buff the trusts. Let's see. Am I 
forgetting something. I, I am. I'm forgetting the fact that Ninja has like a mix of gear. It can use both uh, like the Far Eastern style gear and the um, the other stuff as well. And it's got docket now for the uh, extra ranged attack. Let's see. I don't remember where I put my um my shuriken. My it's like Juju Shuriken or whatever? Where is it? <sighs> I'm sorry about this. Let's see. I can also use these pork cutlet bowls. They enhance the... Um, I believe they enhance the of the entirety of the, of the, the whole party. Um, including trust. I think they work on trusts. I'm not 100% sure on that, so I don't want to waste them right now. Because uh, this isn't technically like super, super, super duper serious. But it's, it's serious enough. all ready to go. We're almost at a freaking hour and a half. You know what? I'm not going to force you to watch like the next attempts in one sitting. Uh, I just want, I'll show you, you know, what I'm doing, the ideas I have now, and I will uh, see you next time. I'll, I'll just go ahead and meet you at the cave to, uh, to the Boreal Hound. And we'll get this thing killed. We will. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.